No matter what you're a fan of, Texas has the trip for you. There's the trip to Texas and the trip. Or maybe you're the kind of fan who'd prefer a trip to Texas or a trip. Either way, go to TravelTexas.com slash get your own for the only trip to Texas that matters. Yours. An important message from Blue Ridge Hospice. There may be several hospices now claiming to serve the area, but Blue Ridge Hospice is the only local hospice that has been serving here for 40 plus years, operates the only hospice inpatient care center, conducts the only community-wide grief and bereavement programs, offers a nationally recognized music therapy program in conjunction with Shenandoah University, outscores every other Virginia hospice in Medicare's quality scores, and so much more. Blue Ridge Hospice, the first, the best. Find out more at Blue Ridge Hospice. Hi everyone, it's Amanda Rieger Green. Welcome to Soul Sessions. Today I get to answer some listener questions. Hopefully their inquiries and the way in which I am able to reflect back messages to them from their soul will impact you as well. Usually, if you're listening, there is something that you get to hear in these messages. So look for the similarities. I challenge you to look for the similarities rather than the differences and see what resonates with you. See what it sparks within you. Find that sense of familiarity and hopefully you get some clarity and direction in whatever it is that you are seeking or searching for right now. Our first question comes from Melanie. Her question is, and it's a two-part question, I have an upcoming job interview, one I applied for last year and didn't get. However, I'm scared if I get it, I will have imposter syndrome. How do I feel like I belong and deserve the abundance I've been afforded? It's such a good question. It's one I certainly resonate with because imposter syndrome, it's a thing. It's something we all struggle with. One of the big things that is coming through, Melanie, is the belief in yourself. Trust in God, believe in yourself. And yourself with a capital S. What do you bring to the table? What do you know? You're extremely wise. Integrity is a cornerstone of your energy field. I'm doing this because it feels right. It matters. It means something. It makes a difference. And in this job, in this opportunity, it's not just about the day-to-day of the job because you are very process-oriented in the way that they show me your energy field. However, it's about the meaning behind it, that I'm mattering. I'm making a difference. I'm sharing my God-given gifts, trust trusting in them and knowing that I am very valuable. I'm smiling a little bit because I had a friend just this week say to me, a very dear friend of mine who I trust and appreciate, she said, Amanda, you are very valuable. And I know that. I know that I add value. That's where my heart usually comes from. But I go into that small version of me that says, I'm not enough. I don't know enough. What if I don't get this perfect? (laughs) What if I don't get it perfect? And that's what I hear in the voice in your head, Melanie, is what if I'm not perfect? Man, I know for me, when I am challenged, when I mess up, when I screw up, that's when I learn. I learn faster and grow. And because you didn't get this job the first go around, It wasn't meant to be at that time. And this job that is coming through for you, that sense of belonging and abundance sustainably that you were looking for, set yourself up now to know that you belong and you are abundant. So for today, in your day to day, and also this this goes out to anybody, anyone listening, the things that you seek in life, and Melanie is very specific here. I love this question because she says, How do I feel like I belong and deserve the abundance I've been afforded? Belonging, abundance. Melanie, where can you find belonging and abundance in your day-to-day and expand it, appreciate it, recognize it? I love the word recognition. It literally means to recognize, rethink, rewire the patterns in your brain. There's an easy way to respond to that that is actually neurologically effective called neural patterning. I suggest this often. I do this myself. 
brushing your teeth with the non-dominant hand, getting up on the opposite side of the bed, doing things opposite of what's natural to you, carrying your purse on the opposite shoulder, anything that shifts up patterns of behavior that are autonomic, automatic, noticing that and reframing it, repatterning it. So if you do brush your teeth with the nom- dominant hand, and I always say this and laugh, hopefully you brush your teeth a couple of times a day. So you get about two minutes, two times a day to practice this. And when you switch to the opposite hand and it's frustrating and it's uncomfortable and you may feel like your teeth aren't getting cleaned, holding that toothbrush in the non-dominant hand, feeling through the awkwardness, laughing at it, lightening up around it, and then you can go a step further and set intentions in those moments that are literally, imagine that you're rewiring the way you think. Old patterning, unconscious, unconscious thought patterns, bringing them into your conscious awareness. So for you specifically, Melanie, shift the toothbrush, opposite hand, and say, I am repatterning my brain to recognize, to know, to trust that I belong. I am whole. I am enough. I am deserving of abundance in my life, inside and out. I am cultivating an innate sense of abundance, worth, richness, and value that feels infinite internally and resonates externally. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate this. I see it. I believe it. I know it. And then finish brushing your teeth. And none of that, I always say this too, this is important. You don't have to articulate anything perfectly and eloquently. You go with what comes to your heart. Simple is better. I belong. I am in the belief that I belong. I know. I trust. I am worthy of the abundance I am creating in my life. The richness internally and externally. I am abundant. So simple I am phrases will work. And also in this job, one other thing that's coming through, Melanie, is your leadership abilities. You are an empowered leader, and I know you know this about yourself. Live it, know it, trust it, lead with it. Roll your shoulders back, lift your chin up, and speak from your wisdom. Speak from this is the value that I add. This is what I know, and also what do you get to teach me? What am I learning? Where's the learning curve? But here's what I know. Here's why I'm qualified, and your heart is in it. That's another thing about you is if your heart is in it, if it feels aligned, in that sense of abundance, it feels abundantly aligned, like this matters, it means something, you excel. And this job is about you excelling, but you enjoying it, enjoying the abundance you have created, belonging, feeling at home in your own skin. So brushing your teeth, I feel at home in my own skin. There's another part to Melanie's question, which I want to address, and I think it Really, actually, it's the same answer, just different question, which will resonate with a lot of you out there. How do I help my children reach their full potential and overcome their obstacles? Well, first of all, Melanie, you're an amazing mom. You're consistent, you're present, you're accountable and reliable, and you care, you deeply care. That in and of itself shows. It shows in the way that you show up each day. A huge part of you feeling and trusting your abundance and belonging as a mother and as a parent, learning as you go and also calling on your wisdom, is in terms of them reaching their full potential and positive outcomes over their challenges, their obstacles, you get to show up and be supportive. They are on their journeys. There's only so much you can do without adding extra stress or pressure in terms of how you show up, how you offer to support them, and then allowing them to have their highs and lows, to stumble and fall, and to get back up. So knowing that their challenges, their obstacles are opportunities and reminding them of that. Okay, this was a real challenge for you today. How can I support you? Or what do you think that taught you? Or what is that inspiring in you? What are you learning from that? Asking them questions regarding their challenges. And when it comes to their potential, that is only something that they internally and externally get to cultivate. You get to be there to be the most amazing, consistent, loving, compassionate, steadfast. You are a very steadfast person. Steadfast 
human and mother that you are, but letting them, giving them the allowance to flourish and also to fail, to not be afraid of failure. Know that the challenges, the obstacles are opportunities. So when they scrape their knees, essentially, when they fall down, when they struggle, when they have tough days at school or in career obstacles and paths, saying, okay, what is this showing you? What are you learning from this? How do you feel about this? And where, how can I support you in your clarity? Because I love you. I'm proud of you no matter what, which you already know that. You are proud of them no matter what. You love them no matter what. Hard days and beautiful days alike. You get to be consistent in that and give them the space to figure out their truth, their clarity. So consistency and also knowing you're not an imposter as a mother. That's why I love these two questions together because it's trusting that you belong. You deserve the abundance you've been afforded. And that as a mother, you get to show up, you get to support them, and you also get to allow them the opportunity to learn through their lessons, their challenges, as well as their successes alike. I hope that helps, and I hope that resonates with everyone. Thank you, Melanie, for these thoughtful questions, and I wish you luck in the new doors that are opening in your life and also for you to be trusting of and abundant in your abilities as a mother because that is one of the hardest jobs so many of you have out there is being a mom and knowing that there's not a perfect playbook, but trusting your wisdom, trusting your heart, and trusting your children, and then give it to God. Don't forget to include God, keeping God at the center. Hey, God, show me. I don't have the answers today. Hey, God, I'm struggling. Show me the answers today. Thank you so much for that question. Hey, it's intern John. Summer is here, and Safeway's Flavor Adventure digital game is back. Play in your Safeway app through August 1st for a chance to win a weekly cash prize drawing, gift cards, exclusive coupons, and more. Earn extra game plays and sweepstakes entries for every $10 you spend using your Safeway for You account. Start your adventure today in the Safeway app. No purchase necessary. Rules and restrictions apply. Play, win, save at Safeway, your favorite local supermarket. This question comes from Melissa. She shares, I'm turning 54 soon and I feel lost. I've suffered lots of heartache, disappointment, and am questioning many things in my life. I miss my granny and our talks. I need some reassurance and guidance. And will I ever be truly loved one day? Thank you, Melissa, for sharing this. You're not alone in feeling this. I know there are lots of us out there who have these deep questions. And they're questions around meaning and purpose. Those aren't the easy questions, but when they come up, There's a beautiful opportunity that happens to get clear in your truth. Melissa, this is a year of discernment for you, meaning it's a year of interconnecting your head and your heart. What do I think? What do I know? What do I believe? And what do I feel? What do I trust? When do I feel a part of rather than apart from? When you fall into cynicism this year, because that's what they're showing me, it's a real year where it may be very easy to default into the glass half full, the disappointment that you've experienced, the suffering. When that stuff comes up, instead of shying away from it or getting too lost in it, see if you can say, what is this showing me? Or this suffering, how can I alleviate it? This disappointment, what can I let go of? Who can I forgive? And that's another thing that's coming up very clearly for you and I think for some other people out there is where can you practice acceptance or forgiveness, but especially with yourself? You are tough on you. That is not lost on me. You are a perfectionist. You strive to encourage and inspire people, but you don't always feel encouraged. You don't always feel inspired. So you've got a little bit of a block in your energy field as far as your receptivity. This is the example I like to give and share with this. 
when you're out and about and somebody compliments your clothes, you know, oh my gosh, I love that purse. This is one of my favorite examples because it's so simple. Oh my gosh, I love that purse. So many of us default into, oh, this? <laughs> I've had that forever. Or oh, this? I got this on sale at TJ Maxx. Instead of doing that, when somebody compliments you, and it can be superficial, it can be that they love your shoes or your purse, say, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I love them too. Or, oh, isn't it so great? Isn't this purse fabulous? Work on your receptivity. When someone expresses their admiration, their appreciation of you, gives you a compliment, see if you can not only receive it in your language, but in your being. Meaning, almost imagine or stand still a moment and breathe it in. Receive it. You can also practice in your energy field envisioning your aura, your auric field around you, like it's this beautiful egg, you know, a very beautiful glowing egg around your body. Bring it in about six inches. Imagine that it's about six or eight inches from your body. So bring your aura in close. A lot of times our auric field goes way out into the universe, like a frequency and an antenna that we spread way out, and then we end up feeling scattered and lost and uncertain. So grounding in, but imagine you're grounding. So bring your aura in and infuse it with some kind of light or color that resonates with you that exemplifies radiance, luminosity, optimal health and well-being, and rather than suffering, joy, peace. The opposite of suffering is peace. The opposite of disappointment is feeling recognized, feeling a sense of approval, feeling abundant or whole. So imagine your aura, bring it in, infuse it with some kind of light or color, so gold, purple, silver, blue, whatever comes to you, green, doesn't matter, and just envision, I am healing suffering. I am inviting in greater peace, ease, wholeness, fulfillment, trust, certainty, clarity, and inhale and exhale that. That's an easy practice you can do alongside of when someone expresses their appreciation for you or recognizes you, receive it. And you may even have to say, thank you so much for that feedback, or thank you for letting me know you appreciated this or you love this and go one step further in your vulnerability and say something like, you know, that couldn't have come at a better time. Or, wow, I needed to hear that today. Thank you. Thank you. Received. Thank you. I have to practice this all the time. It's not easy either in pausing and receiving. I am used to suiting up, showing up, and giving. And Melissa, that is very clear in your energy field. You are strong. You're fortified. You're determined. You have worked very hard in this lifetime. And that can be confused with, I've worked so hard. What is all this about? Fulfillment or wholeness. And so much of that is with really redefining some subconscious, unconscious belief systems. I'm never going to be truly loved. Because that was another one of your questions. Will I ever be truly loved one day? Why do you think you're not truly loved now? I know that's a big question and it's tough, but if we are seated in the divine, whatever your belief system is, if we are made in God's creation and God is either everything or nothing, God is love, then why are we not love? So in order to recognize that you already are loved and in order to attract love into your life, true love, evidence of love Build it up within yourself. It's an inside job first. Not easy. And this is a year of slow and steady wins the race, being mindful, thoughtful, discerning, taking one thought, one belief at a time, and bringing it within, crystallizing it into your belief system, which takes practice. It takes deliberation. It takes clarity. So get very clear. You're craving peace. You're craving satisfaction or fulfillment that's the opposite of that disappointment and you're craving the recognition of an experience of love and love comes in many forms friendships family pets 
intimacy and romance, the love that comes with mysticism, divine love, God's love, start seeing where that is showing up in your life. What friends do you have? What relationships do you have now that are loving? Identify those relationships now and reach out to them. And if it's a good friend, just reach out and say, hey, I want you to know I really love and appreciate you. Here are the things I love and appreciate about you. And share that with them freely. And then pause and take a minute and inhale and exhale that. I am appreciative that this person shows up in my life this way. This person loves me when I'm struggling. This person shows up no matter what. One of the biggest tricks in my book, (laughs) and it's really easy and it really works, is my dogs. I adore them. They express unconditional love and are happy to see me whether I've been gone 30 minutes or three hours, three days. It doesn't matter. But when I hug on them and love on them and they're excited and joyful, there is this vibration of unconditional love that is being exchanged in that interaction. That right there is a very, very high vibrational frequency. That is the vibration of unconditional love. So sometimes if I am present enough to recognize and feel that and know it and be in it, one thing that works is when I'm snuggling with the dog or I'm loving on them or they're loving on me, I literally am very present to that vibration and I will say, I am worthy of love. I am love. I am giving and receiving love. My relationships are love. Thank you for all the love I have in my life and the love that is growing in my life and the way in which I get to see and share that. It has become innate to me. You can hear it. It rolls off my tongue very, very rapidly and then I'll go back to playing with the dogs. It doesn't take much energy or time when you recognize you are in a high vibrational frequency, when something is peaceful, When something is peaceful, Melissa, whether you are sitting and having a cup of coffee or you've had a long day and you sit down and you get to just relax and turn the TV on or take a bath, whatever it is, just sit down and say, oh, it feels good to kick my shoes off and put my feet up and put my pajama bottom pants on. Oh, I feel good. I feel peaceful. I feel relaxed. Oh, may I experience this more in all aspects of my life and day and may I believe it know it and trust it and then watch tv enjoy your bath eat something delicious pay attention to when the suffering comes up the disappointment comes up and arises the fear of not being loved and literally choose make a decision to rewrite that story This is your year to harness that and capitalize on it. And all the little tricks and the little opportunities I just shared, anyone, any one of us can do these things in a multitude of arenas, but it takes presence and traction, building traction, building discipline around paying attention attention to old, outdated, limiting belief systems, subconscious patterning that we default into that really directs the show more than we know. So get conscious, get present, and know that. And as far as your grandmother goes, missing your grandmother and your talks, she was a safe space for you. She was one of those people in your life who knew how to love on you, create safety, create nurture that you could receive. Sometimes, and they're showing me this about you, is it's hard for you to be loved on. I mean, affectionately held tight and held close because there's this fear of what if it's too painful? I think a lot of people can relate to that. I, get, I certainly get that. She was able to love on you, and it's something that you miss. Talk to her about it. You get to still have talks with her. I know it's not the same as picking up the phone or sitting down and visiting with her face-to-face. I get that. We all, A lot of us get that, especially in losing loved ones that we had those intimate, safe, comfortable relationships with. Say to her, Granny, hey, miss you today. I miss these things about our relationship. Thank you for showing me and fill in the blank. What did she teach you? Tell her. And then ask her to help guide and direct you to connect with the ideal people to support you in cultivating more love, more peace, and more fulfillment. You are strong, lady. I can it's it's all over your energy field. You have an empowered soul. Use it. Make a decision. Make a decision to dedicate yourself this year 
in little ways that will gain traction around listening to your thoughts and getting clear around your beliefs and trusting that you are worthy of and have evidence of opportunity for peace, for fulfillment, for expressing, experiencing, and receiving greater love in all all aspects of your life. I sure hope that helps, and I'm sending you much love and light along this journey. Thank you so much for these these thought-provoking questions that I feel like will be supportive to others out there. Lego is the door to a world of imagination. If you love Lego, there's something you've got to see. It's Nature Connects, a fun outdoor exhibition in Winchester at the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley. Enjoy the sights of a polar bear made with 130,000 Lego bricks, an 11-foot-long rhinoceros, or a life-size zebra made with Lego bricks by artist Sean Kenny. Experience the magic of Nature Connects. Get discount tickets at the MSV.org. The MSV.org. Sponsored in part by iHeartMedia. Go anywhere in a reliable Toyota SUV, complete with the tech you need for any adventure. Like a RAV4, with available panoramic view monitoring, giving you more visibility than ever before. Or check out a Highlander, available in hybrids to combine efficiency and all the space you need. Or a Venza, available with a 12.3-inch touchscreen and premium sound system. Choose your Toyota SUV today. Visit buyatoyota.com for more, and let's go places. This next question comes to us from Bridget. It's about career and her relationship, things that all of you can relate to. Her first question is, where should I be putting my energy as far as career and business is concerned? One of the things, Bridget, they are showing me is you are extremely driven and process oriented. You are a box checker, a list maker. You like formularies. You like asking questions and figuring out the most direct route where your challenge sometimes in your is your flexibility and spontaneity and that's actually one of your soul's greatest opportunities in this lifetime is becoming flexible giving yourself permission to change your mind one of the things they're showing me as far as business goes is you crave a job a profession where there is a clear plan of action there is a goal you put your head down and you execute. You get your ducks in a row, you roll up your sleeves, and you do the work. You will enjoy that satisfaction that comes from putting your mind and your energy and passion into something. The other thing that they're showing me that you're craving is this element of flexibility, meaning working smarter, not harder. Quality over quantity. That is a cornerstone in your energy field that I'm not sure that you fully believe yet. Yet it's something your soul is urging you towards, meaning it's like getting up and having a full day, a full plate, lots of things, lots of things on your to-do list, your schedule, and feeling like, okay, I got all these things done. Now I get to relax. Or I worked really hard. Now I get to be happy. Now Now I make all the money. It's about really knowing that you can maximize your mind, your talents, and your abilities in shorter bursts of time that have more focus and more passion where you have flexibility. And what they're reflecting back to me is I remember being in business development. I had a lot of autonomy and flexibility in my schedule. And I can remember you know, getting up, getting out in the field 7 a.m. in the morning, hitting a bunch of offices and making a bunch of meetings, fulfilling the responsibilities of my day. And I would have had a full day by 1030 or 11 a.m. And it didn't mean my day was over or I was unavailable. But come that time, I had a hard time sometimes taking a little break for lunch, running a couple of errands. And I had that flexibility and freedom in my job. I had my, my phone with me. I was available to redirect and be where I needed to be. But From 7 a.m. to 10.30 or 11, I was knocking it out, productive, fulfilled, but I had a really hard time giving myself the allowance or the permission in my mind, centered in my mind, by the way, of, oh, I can go run a quick errand, or I can sit down and eat lunch or meet someone for lunch, and I'm still available, and I'm on the clock, and I'm being productive. I'm not skirting my responsibilities. I have this flexibility built into my day. I need this 
R and R, this revitalization time. I need to nourish my body, do something that gives me a break for a little bit where I get revitalized. And then this afternoon I can go make these other appointments or be available to do whatever may be needed of me, or I can go home a little bit early. It's not about not telling my boss or communicating that, just trusting that I'm doing a good job. I'm putting my time in, my energy, my talents, and nobody was over there ever thinking, oh, Amanda's just knocking off for the day. She's not working, because that's what I would tell myself. Oh, I'm afraid somebody's gonna think I'm not working if I take a few minutes or I take a little bit of time. It was about, first of all, knowing that I was working and producing, but also that I could communicate that. That's one of the things that you're craving is flexibility in your job that gives you freedom, but also having quality in your focus and in your attention. So looking for something that gives you stability and a framework, but also adds in spontaneity and flexibility. This is a big year of expanding your mind. The biggest thing for you, biggest bang for your buck, is unlimiting the possibilities around belief. This comes up often for all of us. But how do you limit your beliefs? Oh, I'm going to have to work hard. Everything's going to be really difficult. And then I get to relax. Or then I get to enjoy myself. No, it's like, oh, can I enjoy myself even with a full schedule? even with a lot on my plate. We can't always do that. For me, and this is where I want you to really listen to your language this year, because that's going to, I'm going to answer the second part of your question, and I want to shift up some of your language, because it'll, it, it changes the way we think about things. The perspective is important in listening to our language. You use two big words in the next question that I'm going to shift around a little bit for you to raise the vibration of the question. But still around business, looking at where you can say, wow, I was productive today. I was abundant today. When I have a full day and a lot on my plate, when I have a quote unquote busy day, which I rarely use that word, I'm busy all the time, but I don't use that language. I say, ah, today my cup runneth over. (laughs) Today I have an abundant day. I learned that from a friend. She, She used to say, oh, yep, just managing my miracles. Shout out to my good friend Gwen. That's what she would say is, I would say, what are you up to today? Just managing miracles. And we laughed about it because, of course, it meant I'm really stressed. I got a lot on my plate. But we were laughing and saying, there's a lot on my plate, and the plate is full of abundance, not stuff that I can't do or don't know how to do or I'm not equipped to do or can't ask for help on. And that's another thing with you is you are so self-reliant and self-sufficient, Bridget. You're so empowered. You're courageous. You're bold. You have a very innovative, pioneering spirit. It's all over your energy field. You forget to ask for help. And sometimes it's because you like to do things and you're very particular. None of that is lost on me. Those are all beautiful qualities. But where can you say, you know what? Maybe this isn't going to get done today. I'll get it done tomorrow. And that's okay. That's okay. Nobody's breathing down my neck. So look at your language. When you have a quote unquote stressful, busy day, can you say, wow, it was a full day. It was abundant. Wow. I'm grateful I got all that stuff done and I get to rest right now. Tomorrow, new possibilities are opening up. Expand your language. That speaks to your second question. Here it is. Should I stay in this relationship and try to work out the issues or are we just not compatible long term? Should is one of my least favorite words and so is try. Should implies I could have done it differently. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. So you know, you've heard that phrase, don't should all over yourself. <laughs> should implies that you're just uncertain. Should, should I have done this? Should is a, it's just a shaky word vibrationally. Trying implies you're never going to get there. So this is how, just reframe the question to start. And this is for anybody out there, like eliminating words like should and try. And then like I was saying, busy, I replace sometimes with abundance. Even if I'm laughing about it, managing miracles, shift your vibrational, the, the words, the frequencies, the way that you speak, speak higher, higher vibrations, more infinite possibilities into your words. The more conscious you are in your language, your language has power. The cells and the DNA in your body respond to the intonation of your voice, even if it's in your mind's eye. Believe that. Think about that. Chew on that for a minute. Okay. So is this relationship sustainable? 
That's your first question. You already know the answer to that. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer it for you, but you know the answer. But when you ask the question, do I need to try? Can I do I have to try to work out these issues? All of that implies an uphill battle. That it's work. Yes, there is work and nurture and energy and time that goes into relationships, but should and trying imply you already believe it's an uphill battle and it's gonna be a job. It's gonna be hard work to make it happy. Remember how we were talking about the destination versus the journey, meaning you're very goal oriented and that is a beautiful skill of yours, but it can be a double-edged sword. So getting out of the, the destination and into what do I have in this relationship right now that I value? What am I grateful for? What are the qualities in my partner, in this person, that I love and appreciate? And then go to the other side. What are things that are, that are not working for me, that I'm struggling with, that are not aligned with my value system or where I don't feel fulfilled? Get clear around that and then ask yourself, does this relationship feel reciprocal? Does it feel balanced? And if it doesn't feel balanced, which is okay, we go through periods of balance and imbalance, but if it doesn't feel balanced and you feel like you're having to trudge, do the work, try, really moving uphill continuously, where can you either let go and practice acceptance? I'm happy with this person just as they are today, not who I think they're becoming, Is this person my person if they were never going to change, if they were going to always be this person that they are? Is this the person who lights up my life and I get to light up theirs? You know the answer to that question. I mean, it's very clear. And this is a year of decision making, risk and reward for you. It's a year of really trusting your voice. Doesn't mean it'll be beautiful and easy. It may be a little bit painful. It may be a little bit hard. It may be about some really big decisions that include both your head and your heart. That seems to be coming up. But it's also about you feeling recognized, feeling that you get the amount of attention and recognition that you give others. You do a lot of motivating, inspiring, leading, and encouraging in this relationship they're showing me. doesn't mean that your partner doesn't do that or isn't capable of doing that. But if you feel like you're the one really pulling things together, how can you work on communicating your needs and your wants and your truth and see if it evolves? See if the relationship balances out a little bit. And if it doesn't, and if it feels like trying, if it feels like an uphill climb, and it doesn't feel more soft, gentle, natural, reciprocal, easier, softer, You will know, and this is your year, especially in the fall. I think you're going to have some real clarity come September, October, around where your heart is and what you know. So more will be revealed, but right now work on your voice. Work on trusting and building language of trust around what you value, what you want professionally, that you want a clear game plan, you want infrastructure, you want routine, you want your goal oriented, you want to achieve your goals and succeed and feel recognized. That's a huge part of your storyline in this lifetime is truly feeling recognized. And you're worthy of that recognition. You inspire a lot of people, by the way. They're showing me that. You're very inspirational. You're very motivating. But you also want to feel motivated. You want to feel inspired yourself. So feeling that in work, feeling that in love and relationships. And then also finding spontaneity and flexibility. Where can you be flexible in your relationships? Where can you lighten up and say, you know what? This person falls short a little bit in these areas, but I can live with it because I love them because of all these other reasons. No one is perfect. And I know this from my own experience And it's hard truth that I've learned about myself is I get in trouble when I start loving someone or liking someone for who I think they can become or their their potential. I start putting these expectations on people and I am always setting myself up for disappointment if I do that. So do I love this person just as they are today? Can I accept them? Can I see them through the lens of acceptance and love or are the, the qualities 
not acceptable or things that are messing with my peace and serenity. Same thing in a job. You want a job that's fulfilling, you want some flexibility and spontaneity, and you want fulfillment and recognition through the process, through achieving your goals. That's the kind of job you want. And as far as love goes, it's about finding balance in your partnership and not thinking that you have to or behaving as if you're the one that has to keep everything intact. Because that gets exhausting, right? You want a partnership. You want to share responsibilities. Have fun. I hope this provides you with a little clarity. And the reason I said have fun with this is this is a year of expanding your possibilities, unblocking your mind. Get curious. Recognize you are worthy of abundance, fulfillment, love, fun, sustainable, growing, evolving relationships. Where are those already showing up in your life and how can you manifest more? through your words, through the power of your words and raising that vibration, opening yourself up essentially to unlimited possibilities versus a very limited mindset. You have that potential. It's very clear. Use that dynamic mind of yours, the innovative spirit that you have and start dreaming big. Dream big and start taking action step by step. I hope that helps. Thanks so much for your question. 